The dream is to escape to a place where the worries of this world are gone. For a short while, we get an experience that no one else will ever know, but it's lost once we open our eyes. When someone you love becomes a memory, their memory becomes a treasure. The week before my husband died, we went to Amelia Island to a wedding. So what do you think about today, Charles? What are we going to do? I don't know. I'm finna go to Orlando right now. You don't ride me, but come on. <laughs> we had such a good time. I mean, one of those old-fashioned, you're walking on the beach, and you're holding each other's hand, and you get in the water. It's like we hadn't done in years, you know? While some fear death, Others welcome it as an opportunity to reflect on the fullness of their own life. My mom called all of us in, um, me, my dad, my grandmother, to Baptist Hospital. So when she called all of us in, she talked to us and she said, I have terminal cancer. And I said, yeah, okay, sure. She says, no, I have terminal cancer. They don't know how long I have to live. Death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. It was really, really unexpected. She, she had had a stroke. And um, so they took her to the hospital. She was fine whenever she was at the hospital. And then I think at like 54 hours, she took a turn. And um, she was in a coma for seven days. And then she passed away. We actually found out that he was actually killed at work. He was uh, run over by one of the trucks. The driver did something wrong, and the truck flipped over on him. And unfortunately, the way we actually found out was through Facebook. I had this patient once. I don't remember her age. She was an African-American girl, and she was somewhere between 30 and 40. And she came into the hospital complaining of continually having hemorrhoids. So someone said, okay, this girl is this age, she shouldn't have hemorrhoids all the time, so let's do something. They did an MRI and found out she had colorectal cancer. And she had tumors from her mouth to her anus. And at that time, they said, there's nothing we can do, she's going to die. And she actually walked into the hospital. I watched her walk in, and I watched them wheel her out. When I lay me down to sleep, in my dreams is where we'll meet. The dreams that I do have about her, and it's been the same way like over the years, I, I'm sure that it comes from some psych psychological issue that I have within myself. Um, but usually whenever I do have dreams about her, it is as if she is like running away from me and I'm trying to find her. Like I've had dreams before. Actually, I had one very recently that I dreamt that um, she was alive and someone told me that she was alive and like I had somehow gotten this information and tracked her down and I like never could get to her like I was on this journey to find my mom because I knew that she was here and I just never could get to her but it was like I, I could see her in passing or I could see her doing things but I could never get to her. I started having crazy emotional feelings like I cannot believe my mom is gone. My mom, I started having dreams about my mom. And the dreams that I had was with me in the gym, in my dreams, and I'm talking to her just like I'm talking to you. White shirt, black shorts, whistle around her neck, and she was talking, telling me, hey, everything is gonna be okay. I'm here with you, the only thing I have to do is call and, and ask me, just anything. In this stereo right here, would come on in play the same time my mom passed away so for six months nothing was in this stereo and i'm like okay there's nobody in this house but me i didn't set this timer and what's going on and i know it's my mom there are times um being in milton high school gym that i was sitting on the team side and i literally saw my mom walk in and go into the girls' basketball area. 
and I hit my cousin and I said, she's like, what's wrong? And I said, I just saw my mom walk in. I've never had that experience before. And basically I know my mom is always with me no matter what. After that girl passed away, I would see her mom every now and then, maybe about three or four months after she died, I dreamed about her. It was a really weird dream. It was, I can't remember all the details of something like we were in school together. You know, it was something really just odd and off the wall. It was a crazy dream. But I dreamed about her. And then I knew, okay, I'm dreaming about her. You know, a couple of months after she died, and that's probably her coming trying to tell me something. I had no clue what she was trying to tell me. I just felt like she was coming to me telling me something. And I just I immediately felt better. Every time I dream about one of my patients that have passed on, even if it's a scary dream or if it's a good dream, to me, that's them coming to me, telling me something. I'm okay, you know, have your memories, but you know, just let it go. I'm fine. And then I'm able to move on. Right after he died, I actually had to get a prescription for Ambien because I couldn't sleep because every time I fell asleep, I saw him and I kept waking up crying and screaming. So I don't have to take him as much now, but uh, you know, a lot of times I still see him, but when he first died, um, I kept seeing him and it was like he kept trying to, I kept trying to go to him, but he kept walking away. But then I actually had a dream about him, and he was, it's, uh, he was in heaven, and it's so funny because it was him and his mom, who's, de who's deceased also, and they were going fishing in heaven. But my daughter was there also, and they were all getting ready to go fishing. I kept saying, why is D here? And he was like, oh, I just want her to come and go fishing with us. And it was so weird because I woke up laughing, and I was like, the one thing that my husband and his mom love to do is fish. So I think that was his way of telling me he was okay. He's with his mom and they're doing what they love to do is fish. That was a good dream. That was a good one. That one actually had me waking up laughing. So that one was kind of funny because I'm like in heaven fishing. Well, if it's a heaven for my husband, it's got to be some fishing. Some fishing and Heineken. If there's no <laughs> fishing and no Heineken, he's probably up there trying to talk to St. Peter and I like, I know we could have a drink just on Friday or something. <laughs> but if it's fishing and Heineken, my husband is in a good heaven. <laughs> They know that those experiences are real. They just can't, it doesn't feel congruent with what the outside world thinks. That, you know, am I crazy? That is a big question that almost everybody comes in with if they've lost someone very close to them. I think I'm going crazy. Some people see things that are and ask, why? Some people dream of things that never were and ask, why not? Six months after she passed, every day I would go to the cemetery and take me a little blanket and just lay out there and talk to her and just have understanding. That it, it makes it a lot easier if you have understanding um, versus just trying to deal with it. I did, yeah. Most black people, I went to a counselor because I didn't know what was wrong. Um, I went to a grief counselor because I didn't know what to accept or how to feel and more frustration than anything. I went to counseling more so because I was confused and I didn't understand. And I know growing up as a child, I remember, and I might've been like 12 years old, my mom said, you know, there's something that might happen to me one day, but I'm preparing you and your sister. Well, when that day came, I was not prepared at all. I didn't even have a clue about what was going on, but because um, I had anxiety and stress and just confusion, I had to go to a counselor and talk to him. I ain't lay on no couch or nothing like that. Every day I went in there, basically I was crying and she was like, I'm here. If you want to cry for three hours, then that's what we'll do. But I'm teaching you what you need to do in order to not just keep your life on hold and preserve what you know about your mom, but to literally move on. And I started there in November and I finished in February, 2000 and I think it was nine.
I call them ghost stories around here. So, because it, it's just a natural part of what happens when someone dies. And in fact, a lot of people um, are sad or distressed when they don't have dreams, when they don't hear or see their dead loved one. They're because they expect to. A lot of people expect to see that, and I don't see them. What's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? I don't think I really talked to anyone like in my family about it, just because it is something that's so personal and hard to explain. You know, like if I would have had, you know, maybe a really um, like compelling dream about her or something, then it would have been a lot. I would have been a lot quicker to tell someone. But because it was just like a very personal like feeling, I, I don't think I really have, you know, been forthcoming with that. Now I've had conversations with people, like friends and stuff, to where we are on like the spiritual conversation and they know, you know, the experiences that I have. But yeah, I've never really like been forthcoming about it. Before it was just just everything. But now is if something unexpected happens. Like the other day I was I was doing my taxes, and they wanted to know, you know, you single, married, widow, separated, divorced. And I didn't want to check the widow box. And I kept trying to get around, and it kept coming back up. And I didn't want to check the widow box, and I found myself hollering and screaming at my computer, I'm not a widow, I'm not a widow. And I get up, left the office, and I think I called my sister, and I was talking to her, telling her, I'm not a widow. And she's like you are and all oh, that word just oh it just stabbed me in the heart I hate that word and then of course that night I went to sleep and I just dreamed about it but we were back in school doing something I don't even remember what it was but it was just calming it was calming although it's difficult today to see beyond the sorrow may looking back in memory help comfort tomorrow it was it was hard, I mean, to say the least, like that's the understatement of the century, just because of the relationship that we did have. And, you know, for so long it was just me and her, and that was all that there was, was my mama. And then, um, you know, I love my dad, um, but they had only been married for a couple of years, and so it still felt very alone a lot of times. Um, but I had my dad who is amazing and I my little sister kind of I think that a, a lot of times having my little sister made me be stronger because I felt like I needed to be you know like the the mother figure I needed to be that for her and I still feel that way today like I would say more than anything losing my mom has affected my relationship with my sister just because I feel so protective over her I'm gonna get teared up um, like, I just cannot imagine loving anything more than I love her. No. It did not scare me because I'm a strong believer in my faith. I'm a strong believer in God. And I understand that my, my mom is my angel as well as God. But she is my angel. Anytime I'm confused or um, worried about something, it's reassurance that I get from my mom. She comes to me in my dream and she says, I'm here, only thing you have to do, every step that you take, I am here with you and don't be afraid. I thought that I would be, you know, 50, 60 when I lost my mom, not 27, 28 when I lost my mom, but it's, it's okay, it's fine. There's certain things that you just have to deal with in life and that's one that I'm just dealing with every day. I think my job as a nurse, sometimes it can get very overwhelming because you see death a lot. And I think it's God's way of telling me that I'm in the right field, I'm doing the right thing, and that a lot of people don't understand that death is normal, it's just like life. You, you're born, you live and you die, you know, and some people don't want to, to bridge that gap. There's so many people that want to just fight it, you know, tooth the nail, I'm going to fight to the end, when death is just a natural transition. I mean, if you love somebody and that person is gone, that don't mean they're gone from you. They're not gone from your heart. They're not gone from your life. They're just physically gone, you know? And At first, I was so angry with God, you know, I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want to pray. It was like, I don't want to hear uh, there is no God. What do you mean? If it was, he really would have been there. And then after I just stopped being angry and listen to him, you know. It was him telling me, you know, I let you have that love so you could hold on to it. But that's what gets you over. 
remembering that. Anybody, you know, who's, I don't love somebody, oh, you're missing out. You're missing out. Before, you couldn't have told me I'd laugh about anything. But you'll find yourself laughing again. You'll find yourself laughing. <laughs> okay.